In this video clip, we are going to talk about troubleshooting inappropriate temperature results. The temperature results that we're talking about would be inappropriate temperatures that you may have collected from your crossbar readings. It could be inappropriate temperatures or not what you were expecting or what should be expected from your exit end temperatures. It could be from your residue breakout where you see lots of overheating conditions or suboptimal conditions for temperature. So what we need to do before we proceed is we need to one, collect our data. We then need to analyze the data and review that data to, to make an informed decision. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get that data collected. We're going to you know, look at analyzing the data and reviewing the data so that we can you know, see what our, our troubleshooting aspects or how we can improve our results based on the data that we have collected. Now that we're back in the office, one of the things we need to look at is the data from the hatchery that's been collected. So on this worksheet, we've got an area for our incubator pressures, which we've, which we've talked about in a previous training video. Our entrance end or crossbar temperatures, which we've also talked about in previous training video. We want to know our internal infertile egg temperatures or our exit end temperatures, which we've also talked about in a previous video, and then our calibration checks. So all that information should be recorded on this sheet. So for our entrance end temperatures or crossbar temperatures, just for a slight review, we want to make sure that we take these 24 hours after, after transfer, that we enter through the exit end uh, as, as we would be, as this would be less disruptive to the airflow by going into the exit end. We attach the probe to the crossbar and you can review that process on our previous training video. We record the temperatures Here's an example of some, some data that was collected. And any side-to-side -side differences, um, which are highlighted in blue, or lower temperatures in, in the purple, and higher than expected temperatures in the red, our expected temperature, again, as a review, should be 100.3 degrees in a Super J machine with a set point of 98.8 degrees. So if we have any variations side to side, lower temper, lower or higher than expected, what are some of the things that, that can be the cause? <clears throat> so looking at egg pack, we can have fertility issues, which would create um, or side-to-side -side differences. Egg size. egg size can create an issue if we have larger eggs or smaller eggs, you could end up with higher or lower than expected temperatures or side-to-side -side differences. Partial setting can, can also cause some of our differences. What are some maintenance issues that could cause issues with our entrance end temperatures? Air distribution. So we want to make sure our openings, our air intakes are open properly. Air leakage. So our uh, air leakage around the walls here by position one, air leakage through the doors, entrance or exit. Humidification, if the humidity nozzles are spraying too coarse of a nozzle, creating a, a cooling effect 
on, on the lower end could be creating some issues. Calibration could also be off, causing some, some of these um, improper So again, monitoring temperature is key to identifying our maintenance concerns and our internal in our internal infertile egg temperature or our exit end temperature is is very important. So we want to candle and locate top, middle, and bottom infertile eggs as we previously discussed in an earlier video. We want to make sure we mark each egg, we punch a hole in the egg, and we insert our probe to the electrotherm and allow it to stabilize. We would then record the position and the temperature on the chart that I had shown on a previous slide. So what are our expected infertile, uh, internal infertile egg temperatures or our exit end temperatures? A 98.8 degree set point in our Super J, the top and bottom trays should be at set point 98.8. The middle can be a little bit higher, either a tenth to two tenths higher. So 98.9 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit is acceptable. We want to make sure we're doing this recording, taking these temperatures two to four hours before we remove that sixth position for transfer. So here's some data that I've got listed. So what could be some of the, if our temperature is higher at the bottom compared to the top, we need to look at airflow issues. So again, we want to look at our venturis. We want to look at our venturi spacing for our fans, make sure our fans are working properly, our air intake, and the central aisle door, making sure that that's sealed and closed properly. Also want to look at our gaskets, wall gaskets, threshold, and door seals. Our temperature is different than the set point and that's going to indicate a calibration issue. We want to check our temperature and humidity calibration. If we have side to side variations with our exit end temperatures, we want to look at airflow. And we want to look at our fans, our air intakes, center aisle doors, seals or gaskets, thresholds. What if our temperature is lower at the bottom compared to the top? Because remember, the top and the bottom should be the same or should be equal to what the set point is. So if our temperature is lower at the bottom compared to the top, then we have a spray or humidification issue, and we need to take a look at that. Take a look at our nozzles, take a look at make sure the angle's proper. Uh, most likely uh, the nozzle ha has, been, has been worn out a little bit and we're getting too large a droplet. Or we've got uh, some debris in the nozzle again, not creating the proper spray pattern that we're looking for. So that would be the other thing we need to take a look at. Another thing that often is overlooked is our egg handling temperatures. <clears throat> and typically what we want to see is from the point of lay, this should be around 104 to 106 degrees Fahrenheit uh, when the egg is being deposited uh, in the nest. From there, the egg needs to cool to the hen house temperature. We then need to cool that egg to the farm egg uh, receiving room and farm cooler. We then go into our egg transport vehicle 
and that temperature again should be cooler yet and then arriving at the hatchery and this should be the coolest point within the system a lot of times folks want or hatcheries want a definitive range temperature range for each of these and it's very difficult to give that based on where they're located seasonal effects those types of things but what's important the exact temperature isn't important it's it's the pattern and the pattern is we need to progressively make sure that the egg is cooling down that once they arrive at the hatchery they are at the coolest point in that pattern and then when we start our pre-warm and in our incubation we move up if we have alterations to this v which stands for victory and end up with you know something like a w which in my opinion stands for wrong we can then have some early embryonic and mid dead embryos during the incubation process so if you have a lot of early dead embryos you know one of the things to take a look at is your egg handling practices